Teladoc's direct to consumer mental health unit, Better Health, is expected to contribute roughly $1 billion to that top line. Hello, everybody. How are you doing on this fine? Whenever I decide to air this, I've been waiting to make this video because it felt like there was just so many different rabbit holes that I could have gone down. And I think eventually maybe we will do a BJ investigates on this particular topic. But I guess for now, I'm just going to get started and I'm going to do a bit of an informal investigation with y'all, take you along and show you some of the things that I have recently found about better help. Now, BetterHelp came on my radar quite a while ago. I don't remember exactly whose podcast it was, but it was someone who I really like and really respect and appreciate. And for whatever reason, they had taken this BetterHelp sponsorship. And I remember talking to Prem about it at the time, and I was like, oh, I just wish that they wouldn't endorse this better help thing. And I remember at the time I couldn't exactly explain to him like what exactly it was. Like me and Prem always have these intellectual discussions about things where we'll kind of talk about the logic of things. And it's, I guess, strictly speaking, it is argument, but it's not like we're not arguing, if you know what I mean, but he'll push back on me on some of my ideas. And I was like, the main issue for me at that time was that I knew or I assumed that they were not being particularly responsible with all of the different data that they were storing from the clients. And I just felt like it was a push to collect people's data. A lot of people sort of allege that BetterHelp is not so much like a therapy site and more of a data mining situation. Again, that wasn't facts. That wasn't rooted in facts. And so I just kind of let it go. Well, BetterHelp came upon my radar yet again recently whenever we were watching the Stevo, one of those Stevo podcast videos having to do with Bam Margera. Stevo had obviously accepted a BetterHelp sponsorship. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. It's important for people to speak up when things are bothering them. And that's what being in therapy is all about. Better help is the way to get into therapy so easily and simply. They've matched up over three million people with licensed professional therapists. It's so easy. You can match up with specifically the therapists that specialized in the issues that you're looking for help with and it all happens online it's just super simple and super easy i love being in therapy it helps me and i said y'all don't even get me started on better help because i have things to say and a bunch of y'all were like well we want to know what are the things you have to say so i guess let's get started here and i'm going to take y'all along on a little bit of the journey now I will start by showing some clips that y'all probably have seen elsewhere throughout the internet. And then I want to wrap up this video on a portion of the topic that I have not really seen discussed. And that has to do with the ownership structure and basically following the money. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. How many years do you think it's going to be before we see a true crime documentary about better health? I say four at best. All right, I'll tell you my online therapy story. So the year was 2015. I was an idiot. I was also just 21, so I was a baby, and baby idiot combo, lethal. Unable to see any red flags, okay? To set the stage, it was also a really weird time where like the general rhetoric and vibe was Silicon Valley is gonna save us all. Wow, tech for good. Which I know sounds literally insane right now, but I promise that was the vibe. I was in school, I knew I needed help, and I didn't have money to get an actual therapist. So I was like, this is perfect. I can just be on my phone. I do that anyway. The process was super simple. I filled out a questionnaire, and then I got matched with a therapist within 24 hours. In the beginning, I really did have a good experience because I was just complaining all the time, and I loved to complain. And also, I was like, wow, this only needs to text me like once a day. And here I am clacking away all day, in and out, and she really cares. Wow, a dedicated worker. And she would do this thing where she like cherry picks 
boy issues out of the soup of issues that I had. There was a lot to choose from, but she would specifically only talk to me about boy problems. I would go on a rant about like all of these issues and she would say, here's what you should do. Put on your slinkiest black dress, take a bottle of wine over, two wine glasses, go over to his place and be like, so are we doing this? And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna Google this shit of you. So I Googled her and that's when I found out that therapizing me was her side hustle and her main thing was making designer handbags that were like thousands of dollars in the shape of high-heeled boots made out of crocodile leather. Do not trust the BetterHelp therapists. They are so sketch. My one session with a BetterHelp therapist re-traumatized me to the point where I don't know if I'll ever go back to therapy again. Let me just demonstrate for you what I opened the video chat to that morning. Hi, I'm looking at your file, but it says CPTSD instead of PTSD. What's the difference between, what's the C? The next 15 minutes of my therapy session were taken up by them expecting me to describe to them what the differences were between CPTSD and PTSD. Kind of something I would hope a trauma-informed mental health professional would know. This story does not go in the direction that any of you are gonna be able to guess. During this time where this therapist is arguing with me back and forth about whether or not CPTSD is even a valid diagnosis, it is. They're wandering around their home like this. It just doesn't really make sense as a diagnosis because really it's the same thing as PTSD. And I have so many questions. Like why the shades? Why is your house dark at 8 a.m. in the morning? Those questions kind of end when this therapist pulls down their pants and uses the toilet in front of me on camera. They started to get up again, at which point I asked, I'm sorry, hold on, is this actually happening? To which they responded, yes. Is there a problem? It was at this point that I shut my laptop and allowed myself a panic spiral. As a treat. Did I reach out to BetterHelp? Yes. Did they do anything? No. Also worth mentioning, these therapists get a detailed account from the patient about why they want to start therapy with them. Which begs the question, does that sound safe to you? I'm gonna say two because the therapists they allow on there are insane. So I tried BetterHelp like a year ago. And in my first meeting, they're like, well, what are you struggling with? And I tell them I have an anxiety disorder, a panic disorder, and I'm dealing with depression. To which he goes, I don't think you really have those disorders. It's just society's fault because right now they're oppressing men. So first I want to give a little bit of a shout out to Kiki Chanel. She definitely takes a very deep dive into this whole ordeal. In her video, she does talk a little bit about the history of the company and how about four, maybe five years ago, BetterHelp was actually being criticized on YouTube for basically inundating YouTube with sponsorships. Now, a couple of the things that they were being criticized for over at BetterHelp, they did go ahead and fix. For example, I believe one of the prior issues was that the therapists, despite being called therapists, were not actually originally required to be licensed or certified as therapists in any jurisdiction. Back in 2018 that he brought up was they said that they can't guarantee any of the credentials, any of the information that the counselors were giving, any of the education that the counselors had. Basically, they couldn't guarantee the counselors, like anything about them, the therapist, nothing. Okay. I think that BetterHelp has gone ahead and addressed that issue. I saw another issue, and I'll insert the clip here, that therapists are claiming that BetterHelp has basically purchased their information and compiled it on a huge database on one website. I don't remember the name of it, but I'll insert the clip here. You heard what is going on in the therapist world right now? Actually, there's this third-party website called CareDash. Dash has somehow made profiles for basically every therapist who's licensed um, that's out there. When you are licensed, your information is public because you have to register with the state that you live in. So CareDash has made profiles for every therapist, mental health, social worker, marriage and family therapist, stolen their information from their website or other directories that we pay, pay to be on. And when you click work with this therapist now, 
guess where they bring you? BetterHelp. And then they say, oh, this therapist doesn't have availability, but look at all these therapists on BetterHelp that can help you. I know people think there's a lot of money in mental health, but we are very small fish. Why does BetterHelp need to use us as pawns to get people to their website? And on that website where BetterHelp has compiled all of that therapist information, it's kind of like misleading is what the allegation is. Because if you click on one of the therapists, say that maybe that therapist has some area of expertise that you're interested in or something like that. Well, if you click on that therapist's name, then it'll bring you to a third party website that actually just funnels you into better help. Now, in and of itself, I guess that wouldn't be the absolute worst thing because you are seeking out that particular therapist, but it doesn't end there. The therapists are saying, we don't even get notified of that. BetterHelp just funnels you off into someone else, some other therapist or some other care provider, and we don't even get any indication or any knowledge that anyone ever even clicked on our information. And these therapists are saying that they actually have to pay a lot of money in order to be listed on some of these different websites. We pay continuing education fees. We pay licensure fees. We pay insurance. We pay platform fees. We pay website fees. We pay fees to keep client chart information and appointment information. We pay for our video software. We are small fish here. And so they're saying it's misleading of BetterHelp to be doing that. Well, I want to look a little bit today into why it seems to be that it's YouTube or podcasts that are pushing BetterHelp so hard. Okay, so my journey kind of started here with this creator called Busted Biz Bureau. And this video is really what got me started on the rabbit hole. Watch it with me. A truly confounding aspect about BetterHelp that I've never seen anyone talk about is their relationship with various employers across the country. They were just recently acquired by Teladoc, so they got their foot in the door at huge companies, TikTok Corporate, Aetna, Greenpeace, the whole lot. And the way they sell their services to companies to, you know, create a better help aspect of their perks or whatever is the following. Respecting the confidentiality of your employees doesn't mean you need to be kept in the dark over what they are doing on BetterHelp. Monitor utilization, assess mutual stressors, review satisfaction surveys and scores, and track outcomes and effectiveness, all with 24-7, 365 access to aggregate non-personally identifying reports. I have 8,000 questions. The first of which being, what in God's name are you talking about? What is this? This is so insane to me. Yeah. So, I mean, y'all can pause that. Y'all can go back, rewind it, and watch it again. But... It also raised a lot of questions in my mind. So, of course, I start looking up, you know, who is Teladoc or who owns BetterHelp just to go ahead and confirm what that creator said. So, and look, when you type in who owns BetterHelp, Teladoc Health shows up. BetterHelp, direct-to-consumer mental health platform owned by Teladoc Mental Health. Now, when was it acquired? So BetterHelp was founded in 2013. And only two years after it was founded, it was purchased or acquired by another company called Teladoc. As you can see here on the behavioralhealthbusiness.com, BetterHelp is billed as the world's largest online therapy service. Despite the fact that BetterHelp's terms and conditions say explicitly that it is not an alternative for in-person therapy. In the BetterHelp Terms of Service says explicitly that BetterHelp is not an alternative or substitute to face-to-face -face therapy, which doesn't really make a lot of sense when you consider that all of their marketing virtually is BetterHelp is cheaper than face-to-face -face therapy. BetterHelp is better in XYZ ways than face-to-face -face therapy. It's more convenient than face-to-face -face therapy. So in all these different ways, it's, it is marketed as an alternative or a substitute to therapy. But in their terms of service, which still exists today, and you can find it today on their terms of service, they still explicitly state that it is not a substitute to face-to-face -to -face therapy. But they go ahead and call it online therapy to skirt around that. So let's take a look at this article. It says, Teladoc's mental health brand, BetterHelp, hits $700 million in revenue, expects more growth in 2022. 
BetterHelp, the direct-to-consumer mental health platform owned by Teladoc Health Inc., posted a strong performance in 2021 as it pulled in $700 million in global revenue. Billed as the world's largest online therapy service, BetterHelp's 2021 revenue figures were a record high for the platform, which was purchased by Teladoc in 2015 for $4.5 million. More than 2.5 million people, that is a lot of people, have been served by over 20,000 BetterHelp therapists. And according to Teladoc CEO Jason Goryevich, more growth is on the way. I just wanted to read this to y'all because I want y'all to see, it might not even specifically be in this article, but as we move along through some of these documents, I want you to just take note of how they discuss this, how they talk about it and how they refer to certain aspects of the business model. You can definitely tell that they're much more concerned about dollars, cents, financial bottom line than they are about patients. At least that's my reading of it and my opinion, but go ahead, read along with me and you tell me what you think. Mental health remains another key priority for us and an area where we continue to see tremendous demand for care. Goryevich told analysts Tuesday morning for the company's fourth quarter earnings call, and that was back in 2021. So this is the guy who's the CEO of Teladoc, which is the owner of BetterHelp. So Teladoc is the owner of a bunch of companies, including Better help, which it purchased in 2015. Our BetterHelp brand continues to drive significant growth, both in the U.S. and international markets. Goryevich told analysts that BetterHelp has particularly benefited from more brand awareness about its services, along with effective spending when it comes to customer acquisition costs. So look, read between the lines here, y'all. The CEO said that BetterHelp has particularly benefited from brand awareness. Where possibly could that brand awareness have come from? Well, I don't know. One guess, one speculation is people's favorite influencers and favorite creators, content creators on YouTube and elsewhere doing sponsorships with better help sponsor better help my sponsor better help better help for sponsoring today's video better help who is sponsoring this video sponsor and partner better help i love working with better help video sponsor better help about better help better help so excited about better help now they're also saying that they have spent a lot of money when it comes to customer acquisition costs well that's an in my opinion code word for brand sponsorship money. They've given a lot of money out in order to advertise and create more brand awareness. Goryevich goes on to say, we are seeing the benefit of BetterHelp's brand awareness, which enables us to see an increase in the number of members who are signing up without any acquisition costs. Again, People's favorite YouTubers talking about better health, calling it an alternative for therapy. And here we are. It's also seeing growth from employee assistance programs. And that's what the biz development lady right here was just talking about. They have linked in to a lot of huge companies. Let's see what she had to say again about that. A truly confounding aspect about BetterHelp that I've never seen anyone talk about is their relationship with various employers across the country. They were just recently acquired by Teladoc. So the relationship with various employers across the country is related to this employee assistance programs. If you've ever worked at a big corporation, they might have offered you certain apps, right? The Calm app, the BetterHelp app, you know, for free for a year or whatever, something like that. Well, that's exactly what this busted biz bureau person is talking about. The access to the employers. So they got their foot in the door, huge companies, TikTok corporate, Aetna, Greenpeace, the whole lot. And the way they sell their services to companies to, you know, create a better help aspect of their perks or whatever is the following. So when better help or Teladoc, whoever's going to sell the services, shows up to your employer, right? They pitch it. They say, here, employer, here, Winston and Strawn, here, CVS, here, Aetna corporate. These are the perks that you as an employer are going to get if you allow your employees to start signing up for better help. Here's your perks. What do they promise according to Busted Biz Bureau? Respecting the confidentiality of your employees doesn't mean you need to be kept in the dark over what they are doing on better help. 
monitor utilization rates, assess mutual stressors, review satisfaction surveys and scores, and track... So monitoring how many of your employees are using BetterHelp, assess mutual stressors of your employees. So like, let's say a bunch of employees are saying that the CEO is who's stressing them out, or a bunch of employees over at Aetna are saying that long working hours are what's stressing them out. The people who are selling better help are telling your employer that they will be able as an incentive of using better help at the workplace to monitor what y'all are stressing out over. Putting aside completely for like five seconds that all this monitoring and all of this taking the data and using it to your own benefit sounds eerily similar to another digital health app that we might have been discussing over the last few months. But putting that aside, this doesn't seem appropriate and it seems exploitative. It's like just all about dollars and cents. They're, oh, respecting the confidentiality of your members, of your employees, doesn't mean that you have to be kept in the dark over what they are doing on BetterHelp. Listen, comment below if your employer has provided BetterHelp for you. Did you know or were you aware that they may be trying to monitor your utilization rate or assess the mutual stressors among you and the other employees? Review satisfaction surveys and scores and track outcomes and effectiveness? With 24-7, 365 day access to aggregated level non-PII reports. Track outcomes and effectiveness, all with 24-7, 365 access to aggregate non-personally identifying reports. So just to be clear, it is non-personally identifying, so it's not like they're going to see your name and see what you are complaining about. But I can imagine that if it's not that many people falling into a certain category of people actually using the app, it might be pretty easy to triangulate down who's saying what. I'm just speculating on this particular part. Let's go back to Mr. Goryevich's fourth quarter earnings and all of that speech. He says he is bullish on seeing growth from the EAPs. And the EAP, again, is the Employee Assistance Programs, which were just described here by the Busted Biz Bureau. He goes, with respect to better help, in the business to business channel, we are finding a fertile environment among employee assistance program plans. So B2B means business to business. That means it's a business selling itself to another business or a business selling a service to another business. When you order something online, that's a B2C exchange or business to consumer. B2B or business to business is the exchange of products, services, or information between two businesses. That means BetterHelp selling itself to, like this person mentions, TikTok, Aetna, the biggest players. So he says, I'm bullish on that area. He says, we are trying to get more of that. So what is that? What is that though? Collecting and selling your data. The model is sort of a business to business customer acquisition strategy where BetterHelp gets embedded in an employee assistance program plan and a certain set of interactions are included in EAP expense. So basically, this is fancy finance bro for what we're trying to do is make your employer pay for a few sessions here and there. And then once your employer pays for the free sessions, again, this none of this is coming out of BetterHelp's pocket. It's coming out your employer's pocket. Once your employer pays for those first few sessions, he said he hopes it's embedded. He hopes that they're able to ease the people then into using the product. During the earnings call, Teladoc, that's the owner of BetterHelp, reported that its revenue in the uh, fourth quarter of 2021 grew 45% year over year to $554.2 million. With full year 2021 revenue, so that's just for the fourth quarter. So for the full year, the revenue increased 86% from 2020 to over $2 billion. The revenue last year for Teladoc, now this is not BetterHelp, was over $2 billion. So this is a big company, a rich company with a lot of resources. Total visits to Teladoc jumped 38% to 15.4 million. So there's 15.4 million people using the Teladoc services to go to visits in 2021. There's a lot of people. Goryevich, the CEO of Teladoc, credited mental health visits as playing a significant role in Teladoc's overall services, which he believes is instrumental 
to its integrated care philosophy. The company has more than 90 million users on its platform and roughly a third make use of its mental health resources. So I'm assuming a roughly a third of these 90 million are using better help or something like it that's owned by Teladoc. The CEO of Teladoc estimates the Teladoc's integrated care approach has resulted in company revenue, which is 20 to 60% higher than, than that which is generated from members using only the mental health services. So basically you get them in for better help and then you can get them to use all your other crap. He says, we find that since mental health is a longitudinal relationship where members typically have several visits with their therapist or psychiatrist. It acts like a gateway for other Teladoc services. Again, it just grosses me out to see mental health being talked about in this dollars and cents kind of way. Am I really going to defile this grave for money? Of course I am! (laughs) But I mean, I know it exists. I worked in big law. During the same earnings call, Teladoc issued a full year revenue guidance for 2022, and it was ranging from 2.5 to 2.6 billion dollars, which would represent growth of 25 to 30% from the previous year in 2021. The company also said it expects its total visits for 2022 to increase between 18 million and 20 million to go up that much to get get additional 18 to 20 million. So maybe that's why y'all been seeing in the last year so many better help sponsorships. We see a significant opportunity for long-term growth by expanding our relationships and going deeper with our existing clients and members as we execute against our key strategy priorities across primary care, mental health, and chronic care solutions. Okay, so that's what he said. But then, of course, I got to looking into Teladoc because it looks like it's a publicly traded company. So then I look. Who are Teladoc's biggest investors? So I'm on the CNN business page, and this is basically just a rundown of the New York Stock Exchange for Teladoc. And if you scroll down, I'll actually tell you who Teladoc's largest investors and owners are. Now, I am not surprised by any means to see BlackRock on here and Vanguard on here. But the biggest investor is this company called ARK Investment management. Now they own 12.88% of the shares in Teladoc, which owns BetterHelp. And as you can see, I mean, this is just freaking investors. It's just investors. And they read stuff like this and they're like, oh yeah, longitudinal. Oh yeah. EAPs. Oh yeah. We can gather. And remember the reason that the EAPs are working is because BetterHelp has promised that employers are going to be able to get all this weird data on people. And again, this is a mental health app. It is advertised widely as therapy. Imagine, imagine you're going to your therapist's office and what is incentivizing them is being able to sell your data, give like non-identifying, but still possibly identifying information about you and your mental health and what's stressing you out to your damn employer. It's just obscene. And again, I have not seen a lot of people or if anyone talking about this, the only person I've seen talking about anything related to it is this busted biz bureau person, which thank God for her because it started me down on this whole rabbit hole. But then I started looking, of course, into this ARC investment management place. And that is a whole nother situation that is just sketch. Okay. The ARC investment management. Let me, all right. So this is an article from the Financial Times entitled Kathy Woods ARC sheds almost $50 billion in assets since its 2021 peak. Okay. ARC is the name of the largest investor in Teladoc and Teladoc owns BetterHelp. Okay. Might need to draw a little diagram and put it up here, but BetterHelp owned by Teladoc. Teladoc is a publicly traded company. So it also basically has owners. The biggest owner of it is the biggest investor, ARC Investment Management. And here's an article about ARC. Flagship innovation strategy represents a canary in the coal mine for regime shift in markets. And this lady right here is Kathy Wood. She's going to be important soon. Kathy Wood's ARK Investment Management has lost almost $50 billion in assets from its stable of exchange-traded funds since its 2021 peak. 
highlighting the scale of this year's losses in speculative tech stocks. Now, this article is just from last month, December 21st, 2022. Same month, Stevo did his better help sponsorship. Total assets across ARK's nine exchange traded funds, also known as ETFs, have slumped to 11 billion from its previous peak of 60 billion in February of 2021, according to Morningstar data. This was led by steep declines in its flagship ARC Disruptive Innovation. So the one that is invested in Teladoc is called ARC Investment Management LLC, but I really don't know the ownership structure. It could own this disrupted technology ones or whatever. I really don't know. So ARC has lost around two thirds of its value this year and is on track for its worst annual performance. And that was just last month this was reported. ARC Innovation's results have been horrendous this year and very disappointing for investors. This has prompted a sell-off in tech stocks. Wood, that's the Kathy Wood lady, identifies a handful of companies that can make exponential gains by shaping the future, covering areas ranging from space exploration, fintech, robotics, and the genomic revolution. The flagship ARC's shares are down roughly 65% this year, lingering at a five-year low. ARC's losses have led to a decline in its assets under management from a peak of $27 billion in February to $6 billion today. The drop in assets was purely driven by valuation decreases in its portfolio of investments. So what that tells me is the largest investor in Teladoc is obviously going to inform how other people invest into the company. So Teladoc obviously wants people such as, I don't know, its largest investor to continue investing in it. However, the largest investor, for example, is not doing so good when it comes to its financial solvency and things like that. It's lost $50 billion in assets because it has made investments in things that are losing value. It's not like they're running out and selling all their stocks and saying, we don't want to have these stocks anymore. No, no. They've lost value. They've lost assets under their management precisely because the companies that they invest in, like Teladoc, but not Teladoc, other ones, are losing money. And so what would that incentivize Teladoc to do? Not lose money. And so then you see things coming out like this. Oh, look, we're going to buy an article in the Behavioral Health Business Bureau. Look, we, we had $700 million. Please don't pull your investments from us. So I just Googled Teladoc Better Help Revenue 2022. And here's another one from the Healthcare Dive. Oh, for four hours ago. Four hours ago. My timing is impeccable. Teladoc expects... $2.4 billion in 2022 revenue boosted by better help. Dive brief. Let's just read these bullets. Teladoc shared an early look at its financial results at JP Morgan's. What in the hell is JP Morgan having a healthcare conference for y'all? I mean, seriously. Now, this was just on Monday. Indicating between $633 million and $643 million in revenue for the fourth quarter alone, the virtual care giant projected total 2022 revenue between $2.4 and $2.41 billion, according to its regulatory filing. Teladoc's direct-to-consumer mental health unit, BetterHelp, is expected to contribute roughly $1 billion to that top line. Teladoc's earnings expectations for the fourth quarter and the full year remain unchanged. The New York-based company's stock rose more than 4% over Monday's trade following the news. So after this news came out, of course, then the stock price went up. Y'all see this? Better help is expected to contribute a billion dollars in 2022 revenue alone. Here's their uh, Form 8K. I'm going to control find better help. Okay. As previously announced on January 9th, that was yesterday. When I'm recording this video, that was yesterday. Teladoc will participate in the 41st annual J.P. Morgan Healthcare Conference. As part of his presentation, the company intends to announce that it expects a total revenue for the year ended December 31st, 2022, to be in the range of 2.4 to 2.41 billion, including approximately $1 billion from the company's 
better help mental health product. For the quarter ended in December 31st, the company now expects revenue to be in the range of 633. Okay. So 633 million for the quarter, 2.4 billion for the year, one whole billion of that coming from better help. This is a big money maker for something that is not a substitute for in-person therapy. It is shocking to me that people continue to accept sponsorships from BetterHelp, not really knowing what's exactly going on with this whole thing. I mean, we're talking about JP Morgan, a bank, a bank, having a healthcare symposium. It's just, it's just gross. And again, I don't want to use a service or certainly don't want to recommend to y'all use a service, which has all these horrible reviews that we already looked at, which doesn't necessarily just based on common sense appearances really seem to care about the patients who are putting their mental health quite literally at risk using these things because they have been promoted by people like Brad Mondo. I love Brad Mondo, but People trust him because he's so lovable. So he's out here promoting better help. People are, oh, Brad Mondo's promoting it. It must be okay. It doesn't seem okay to me, Steve-O. It seems like a money grab. And given people's personal experiences that they have had with the company, I don't think that I would want to use it, period, even if it wasn't a money grab. It seems like a bunch of finance and tech bros got together and decided to disrupt the mental health market, and it's disrupting it but not in a good way. It doesn't feel good to me. It feels like a money grab that's putting profits over patients, collecting and mining user data to do God knows what with it. Who knows what they're going to be doing with this data? Who knows what the regulations are or are not? And for that reason, I just can't get on board with allowing people to promote this bullshit. I would not recommend using BetterHelp because BetterHelp probably ain't it. I do know some people have had great experiences with better help, but do you really want to take a gamble with your mental health? It's just too much. And it's sad because a lot of people who use better help are doing so because it's their last resort. They really have tried every single thing or, or they've tried everything and they're finally able to maybe try that one more thing one more time. They have these horrible experiences and then boom, they're right back to where they were. Meanwhile, the profits and the revenue of their mental health is being discussed broadly and widely. Huge firms that are losing billions of dollars are investing in them. The Financial Times is reporting about the company. They're putting all this stuff. Oh, we're going to go to the JP Morgan Healthcare Conference. It just doesn't feel good to me. Now, listen, make your own choice. If you're already using better health and you like it, please continue to do so. If you're not using better help and you really think that it would help you, please feel free to do so. I'm not here to tell y'all what to do. I'm never here to tell y'all what to do. But as far as what I think about it, personally, I think it's a money grab. I don't think that they have vetted most of these therapists in a good enough way. I think they are disrupting the mental health industry in a way that is harming therapists, that is harming patients. We can insert as many clips right here from the TikTok as you want to of people giving their firsthand experiences. And I'm just not here to endorse any type of uh, better help or frankly, any type of thing that Teladoc is putting out. In the meantime, facts ain't defamation. Love you, mean it. Okay, bye.